The Kelly and Victoria Fairy Stories Volume 1 If you should happen one day to go into a garden and look behind a hedge and spy under a bush next door to a daisy and if you looked hard and were good and always brushed your teeth then you might, just might, catch glimpse of a house. Now you're thinking, it can't be much of a house, being daisy-sized. Well, say I, just because it's small doesn't make it unimportant. There's many an ant who would have a view on that point. Small is often best. And they'd be right, for where would we be without ants? Though, picnics would be nicer, perhaps. Anyhow, this house is important to one person at least, Victoria Fairy, for it belongs to her. Being a fairy, she is able to fit into the tiny cottage, though she has to use a bit of magic if she has any visitors. Kelly Polo and the Narrow Boat It was a bright, sunny summer's day, Victoria Fairy woke up with a smile as she remembered that today was the day of the annual fairy picnic party and there would be her favourite vegetarian jelly and ice cream as well as scones and cream, jam donuts and kettle crisps. She knew that she would find an invite waiting for her downstairs in the post so quick as a flash she was up, washed and dressed and downstairs. But there was no invite there. Instead, there were just bills. Lots of bills. The other fairies had forgotten all about her. Tears welled up in her eyes as she thought of all the fun they'd have without her and all the jelly she'd miss. Looking at the bills just made her sadder, for how could she pay them on her fairy wages? Well, I'd better have some breakfast. That will make me feel better. She said to herself, but when she looked, she found all her cupboards were empty of her favourite cereals, and there was no porridge. In the end, she could only find some rice and gravy, which was horrible. This is the worst day ever, she cried. She certainly wasn't her usual little ray of sunshine. She went for a walk to see if that would cheer her up. It didn't, because she kept meeting lots of fairies on their way to the picnic, who waved and smiled at her, just to rub it in, she thought. It's awful having no friends, she said to herself, and she sat down by the canal and cried again, this time really loudly so anyone who came by would notice. But no one did, so even that didn't work which made her cry more than ever. Suddenly she heard some shouting. To starboard, you sherbet! Looking up, she saw a boat coming slowly towards her along the canal. The narrow boat was painted in lovely bright colours and was long and thin. Port! Go to the port side! Fend off! Leave ho! A little purple unicorn that ran up and down the length of the boat's roof was doing the shouting. He had a tiny captain's hat perched at a jaunty angle on his head, nudging against his little silver horn, and he seemed to be wearing a pair of rather nicely embroidered jeans. Shiver me timbers! Prepare for builders, why I man! He seemed to be shouting his strange instructions to an equally small polar bear who was doing all the actual work such as steering the canal boat and who was ignoring the unicorn in an accustomed way. Seeing Victoria Ferry by the side of the canal, the polar bear steered the boat towards the bank despite the unicorn's cries of Left, you sherbet, left! The unicorn seemed to forget what his orders were, though, as quickly as he uttered them, for he jumped ashore 
and introduced himself to Victoria Ferry with a polite bow as soon as the boat touched the bank. I'm Kelly the Unicorn, he said in a high piping voice. And this is Polo the Polar Bear. I expect you're wondering why we're late. Well, I've had a right old day, what with the rewrites to my novel. Victoria Fairy didn't know what to say, even if she could have got a word in edgeways anyway, so she just nodded in an understanding way. And you can't get a decent hat nowadays. I distinctly ask for an admiral's hat. I ask you, does this look like an admiral's hat? No, not even close. Polo took Victoria Fairy to one side while Kelly carried on talking to no one in particular. Don't worry, said Polo. He's just having a toot. He'll forget what he was talking about in a minute and we can get underway. You would like to come with us to the show, wouldn't you? It'd be nice if you would. Victoria Fairy scarcely had time to ask what show before Kelly had cried, well, don't just stand there. Get aboard and weigh the anchor, or we'll be late. Come on, shake a leg. Being a sensible fairy, Victoria Fairy was not in the custom of going off with any Tom, Dick or Harry that asked her. But she knew that though unicorns were often pompous, big-headed and argumentative, they were also kindly, generous and warm-hearted and never nasty unlike some people she knew of. Likewise, polar bears had to be respected and shouldn't be toyed with. But this one was clearly a magic bear with excellent manners, so she felt she was in safe paws and stepped aboard. I'd love to come, and I was feeling a bit down sitting here alone, said Victoria Fairy. Well, we can't have that, said Polo. No, we can't! cried Kelly. Quick, fetch you a cup of tea at once and don't be stingy with the sugar. That will make everything right as rain. Polo disappeared inside the narrow boat and reappeared a second later with a teacup and saucer full of the best tea Victoria Fairy had ever tasted. It was so good Victoria Fairy had a refill too, which Polo said was as it should be. They set off down the river, Kelly still barking orders, until he lay down suddenly with his leg in the air. Is he all right? asked Victoria Fairy. Yes, said Polo. He's just asleep. That's how unicorns sleep, you know. He tends to wear himself out every now and then and has a quick nap. Victoria Fairy thought the narrow boat was wonderful, and with the lapping of the water, the gentle chug-chug of the engine, and the rhythmic snores of the sleeping unicorn, she found it so peaceful just watching the world go by. As Victoria Fairy sipped her tea, Polo told her all about Kelly, how he owned the big stately home on the hill, and how all the land around the village belonged to him, also how they did everything together and that although Kelly tended to give the orders it was actually Polo that made sure everything got done. The boat entered the lock which was a small section of the canal that had big wooden gates across it. A set in front of the boat and a set that closed behind the boat as it entered the lock. On the bank a mouse who Polo explained was the lock keeper operated some machinery which let the water out of the lock and the boat slowly got lower and lower as the water level got lower. When the water got to a certain height and the walls of the canal now towered above them, the mouse opened the lock gates in front of them. Polo gave the mouse a wave and they were back on their way. Thanks, Mousy, Polo shouted to the lock keeper. They have locks so that you can get from one stretch of river to another. You can't drive a boat uphill, you see, explained Polo. Just then Kelly woke up and started telling Polo what to do when they came to the lock, which made Victoria Fairy laugh. Polo just shrugged. As they rounded a bend in the river, Victoria Fairy gave a gasp, 
for there ahead, where the canal got wider, were dozens of narrow boats, all beautifully painted and gleaming in the sunshine. How wonderful! cried Victoria Fairy. At last, the show! said Kelly. It's a narrow boat show? asked Victoria Fairy. Of course! She's a bit slow, isn't she? said Kelly to Polo. Polo moored the boat amongst the others and waved at the other captains, who all looked very proud of their boats. Right, said Kelly. You two best get to work with the cleaning while I sort out things ashore. And with that, he was off the boat and away. Polo just quietly got out a mop and bucket. Isn't it a little unfair to leave it all to you? asked Victoria Fairy. Actually, said Polo, it's easy this way. When he helps, I usually end up doing everything twice. He's best left to do the PR work, said Polo. As they surveyed their hard work, Victoria Fairy had a thought. We still need something extra, just to make us stand out, she said. Do you think so? asked Polo. Victoria Fairy pulled out her wand and with a flash the roof of the boat was covered with the prettiest flowers that Victoria Fairy had ever magicked up before. That is good, said Polo, clearly impressed. And just in time, here come the judges. Everyone agreed that their narrow boat was the best turned out and a silver cup was handed to them by Kelly, who, it turned out, was the chief judge. Is it legal? whispered Victoria Fairy to Polo. No one minds that much, said Polo. He owns all the other boats as well, and he just swaps boats every year, so everyone wins in the end. Victoria Fairy thought this was very fair, and their boat really was the nicest looking, this year, after all their hard work. Well, said Kelly, I don't know about you two, but I think it's our time for afternoon tea and scones and jam and cream and everything. It was the best afternoon tea Victoria Ferry had ever had, and everyone had a lovely time, especially when Kelly did a little dance like a hornpipe, which was very nautical. When they set off home, Victoria Ferry was quite sad that they had gone so quickly. But Kelly and Polo promised they'd see her again soon, so she wasn't too tearful when she waved them goodbye. Back at Fairy Cottage, Victoria Fairy thought she should probably go through her bills rather than just leave them on the kitchen table. As she picked them up, she noticed that one of them wasn't a bill at all. It was an invite to the Fairy Picnic. She hadn't been forgotten. She had had it all the time. There was a knock at the door and answering it, Victoria Fairy found a group of her friends all worried and wondering where she had been. They all laughed as she told them what had happened and they had thoughtfully saved her some jelly so she wouldn't miss out. As they went home, one of the fairies gave her an envelope which she said had been given to her by a polar bear outside the cottage. Victoria Fairy waved goodbye to her fairy friends and then, wondering what it could be, opened the envelope. Inside she found a five-pence piece and a note which said, Boat cleaning wages for a hard-working fairy. It should cover the bills. Love, Kelly. Sure enough, when she looked at her bills, they came to exactly five pence. Wondering how Kelly knew this, she saw that there was a P.S. at the bottom of the note, which said, Unicorns are magic too. That night, as she thought back on the day, she said to herself how good it was to have friends, 
especially her new friends, Kelly and Polo, who were so nice. As she got ready for bed, the phone rang. Hello, it's Kelly on the phone, said a familiar piping voice. Hello, Kelly, said Victoria Fairy. It's time to go to bed, tucked in, no nightmares. And with that, he was gone. And that's exactly what Victoria Fairy did. Goodbye. Thank you.